All right, and now we are joined by Alex Ryabchin, who is a new MP from the Batkovshina party. Great to have you here today. Yeah. Hello, guys. So the Thanks first question you. I have for you, um, in the speech that Poroshenko had given, one of his comments is, we finally have a government that can realize the dreams of all Ukrainians. Is that true? Is that something this Rada can do? Well, not government, maybe we, we didn't have a, govern, a government, government yet. yet yeah. yeah, so, but the parliament, definitely we have like more than 300 MPs in a coalition, we can change the constitution. And it's like the first time the pro-European majority we have in, in the parliament and with the perspective of, of the enlargement. So some people, some people argue that it could be like 310 people or even more. Mm. So definitely we have the instrument right now and the question is how we use this instrument or this tool to change the country. Mm. And this is, you know, what you're talking about is the so-called supermajority or a constitutional majority that allows the constitution to be changed. So there's this tremendous potential to get things yeah. done. What was the atmosphere on Thursday? I mean, was there a pressure on the part of MPs and people in the Rada to try and do things quickly? What did it feel like? Yeah, you know, we, we feel the pressure, we feel this, you know, the tension that we need to do as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. But the, like the, the very first day was not, you know, was not tense. The, it was an easy voting because everybody felt that the prime minister should be Yatsinyuk, Groisman should be the speaker. He went to our uh, party meeting at, at the Batkishina office, presented himself as a speaker, and it was like one of the first ever, uh, you know, speaker, the, the candidate for a speaker went to political parties to speak, to answer the question. So it was a truly, you know, transparent procedure. So it wasn't any surprise that like we, we will have these people and there were some other, you know, technical, technical voting. So it, it was an easy voting, but uh, I understand that it's just, just the beginning and we need to work as hard as possible to change the country. Mm. Actually, I, I want to profile our explainer on this, uh, as you said, new historic supermajority, and I want our producers to to put it on uh, on the screen. And basically, it's a, it's really fresh explainer. Uh, what we're trying try to focus on, and what's kind of the biggest issue right now at the moment, whether or not Ukraine will be able to transition from politics of personalities to politics of issues. And actually, that's actually a crucial point to go for politics of reforms. And there are a lot of people talking about reforms, but um, whether or not it's an issue still. And as our explainer shows, there are a lot of great and powerful personalities in Ukrainian politics still. And this could be an issue for potential uh, fallout in the coalition building, you know, new brawls, uh, as we saw before in Ukrainian politics, nothing new. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, there are lots of opinion that this coalition will be, you know, will be break up, split up in in, in spring. Uh, but some others said like it it could be a strong coalition. My my intention that this coalition like will will be in power, you know, for five, ten, or fifteen year time. I don't know for how long, but uh, definitely there are uh, there are challenges that we need to uh, to overcome. For example, the there are like five parties, and the decision will be made by, by the consensus. And there are some, you know, some like principal moments. For example, we are not uh, agreed with the, you know, with the end of moratorium for the selling the land, and some parties wanted to do this. So there will be some principal moments uh, that we will not maybe have the, you know, th 300 votes. Mm -hmm. But uh, all the decision will be made by the consensus, uh, by the consensus moment. And as you see, as you saw, like we formed the coalition. We voted for the coalition, for the prime minister, and also for the speaker in one day. So it was like the quickest ever, I would argue, the the, the voting for this for this candidate. So we already showed the effectiveness of this coalition. Uh, I could argue that like uh, next uh, next Tuesday, this Tuesday, we will vote for the cabinet of minister for the committees, and we'll start working. Well, I mean, I think that's the that's what people are waiting for. I mean, these sort of procedural things, even if they're going faster, I mean, it's a good sign. But what people are waiting for are the big reforms and whether or not can be delivered yeah. uh, on that level. Um, just since you'd mentioned it and something people have been talking about, it's whether or not the coalition can stand, whether it can hold together, because it, it is a broad coalition. There's different parties, very different strong personalities. And um, there's one article I just want to ask our producers to put up. That was from The Economist this week. Yeah. And uh, one of the things they were talking about is the relationship between Mr. Mr. Poroshenko and Mr. Yatsenyuk. And uh, if I were to quote it, it's, you know, it talks about how they've never been close, that Western allies want them to work together, um, but they often butt heads. 
Um, and that, you know, for Ukraine has a very special meaning because after the Orange Revolution, people talk a lot about uh, Yushchenko and Timoshenko butting heads. And just the fact that uh, ideological overlap isn't necessarily the ability mm -hmm. to work together, especially when personalities get there. I don't know, what's, what's your take on that? Are personalities leading politics now or is it uh, values and ideas or just concrete priorities? Uh, I also will be one of the contributors to this, uh, to this, uh, to this article with The Economist. I met with the author and spoke like around two hours mm -hmm. about this. Yeah, there is, a, there is this concern about the two, like uh, the point is that uh, the people of Ukraine voted for the two political, po political powers, one represented by the president, another represented by the prime minister to form the, like to be the lead in the coalition. And everything now is, is about ambition. So whether these two people are able to put down their ambitions and to work for the benefit of Ukraine. For example, our party already stated that we are not like to, to, you know, to boost this coalition agreement to, to decrease the time of forming it. We already uh, said that we declined to take the, to fight for the minister position. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't mean that we are not have uh, any good candidates. We like, we have lots of professional that we are ready to form the cabinet of ministers. Well, does that mean there won't be any ministers from Batkovshina? Is that clear? Uh, we are not, we are not, uh, you know, we are lobbying not, for yeah, it. Lobbying for okay. it. If, if our partners will propose it, we have lots of candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't really mean that we will not take take part in the reform in the country. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a very interesting question because a lot of uh, analysts and even um, people inside the parliament now say that, for example, radical party of Lech Leshko and Batkivshina, they're kind of, um, let's, let's just say the weakest links in the coalition because they have uh, um, a lot of uh, differences with uh, People's Front or P Petro Poroshenko parties. And in case that uh, this politics of personas, the politics of uh, personalities will prevail, those parties are actually more likable to exit the coalition as soon as possible. Is, do you feel that it could be the case uh, in this parliament and um, what, what, what really could stick together all the parties for a long run, which is kind of needed for long run reforms, right? You cannot like go for reforms in two months, you need yeah, at least. So basically what I've heard all, all the time from Ibad uh, negotiation in the inner party meeting that we would like to be this, you know, this glue that stick up the, uh, the coalition itself. Mm -hmm. Because as you, as you said, our leader, Yulia Tymoshenko, knows how it, uh, when, the, when there are two strong political figures and then a conflict, she knows how to solve it. So she, we will be some kind of peacemakers if, if, it, if it needed. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't have any intentions to, you know, to split up the coalition and like... Well, Yulia Tymoshenko as a peacemaker is an interesting new role uh, for me. I was impressed on Thursday because um, when she was out in the hallway outside, you know, she was walking yeah. around and Batkovshina is a smaller party in the coalition, but she still had all the journalists and everyone following her around that, the, that, whole time. That, the point is that she had a, her birthday and oh, that, okay, that, that's that, what it was. Yeah, that one that was one of the one, one of the reasons that a lot of journalists wanted to speak with her. <coughs> okay. Yeah, and it was really a pleasure when all the you know, the president, the prime minister, all the notable person like went to to Yulia mm -hmm. and to, to, to congratulate her and you know, all the time. And, and I'm sitting next to, like, uh, uh, right, oh, yeah, 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 behind behind her. And you know, when the president spoke his speech, he, I, I saw that he definitely looked at her. And sometimes <laughs> I, I felt that he looked uh, directly at my eyes. So okay. yeah, so it's a pleasure that our leader uh, is on the on the big big. Uh, it was on a larger yeah. scale, she gets attention. Sure, 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 yeah. That's absolutely there. Actually, uh, if, we, if our producers could put back this uh, graph we have on Ukraine parliament fractions, and actually the, the thing that I want to point out is that we have uh, a lot of independent uh, MPs still in the parliament. And that was one of the biggest surprises because we all thought that all those independents, at least around 100 of them, mm -hmm. will join the opposition uh, fraction right away because they were elected for three the different uh, system, but you know, through the different process, but they share the same political interests. But what we see right now that um, you know um, we have uh, just 40 members in opposition bloc, and we have over 43 members independents, and over 40 uh, members just in um, parliament uh, parliamentary um, groups. groups, which is not fractions. The question right now, how you will get on board uh, them to proceed with reforms, to uh, negotiate, to have 
um, common interest. Do you need them? And if not, um, whether or not it creates a um, you know, stable reformist uh, atmosphere inside the parliament if you have over 100 MPs that are kind of not the part of the process. Uh, I spoke with lots of people who are not the part of the coalition. They said that they will vote for the good laws that they will support, and of course they will not vote for those that they What didn't good like. laws for that? Uh, for, uh, for example, we spoke with the people from Svoboda Party that they don't have fraction, but they have six or seven people, say seven MPs, and they said that they are not consider themselves as an opposition. They will have some kind of their own position, their own interest, because people who voted for them, they, uh, according to their party program, they will vote for that that they supported. But they don't consider themselves as an opposition. So basically, there are lots of other people uh, who have their special meaning, uh, and I, I don't think that it will be a so. Huge they are problem. fragmented and yeah. not yet. Okay. Yet. Yeah, but you see the potential for them to join either side, uh, or is it's too early to call? Yeah, it's it's too early to call to call for you know for this configuration in the parliament because as I said, now we have right. 302 MPs in the coalition. But uh, some people said it might be you know it might be changed, might be 310 or more. So let let just wait because the parliament just started working. <laughs> so basically, you have this huge pool of independent MPs you can grab from that pool whether any time you, you no, need a, a mature the, the point is that they need to join the fraction one of the fraction to become the part of the coalition so not a single member so no I mean I mean when it comes to the just regular voting process yeah sure sure why not like there like if we, and also we will have the so-called opposition day uh, on on uh, on Wednesday I think mm -hmm. uh, and the opposition will be able to present their laws and if they have good laws like why should we vote well, I know for them? opposition bloc considered the political successor to the party of the regions yep. they're supposed to present their alternative program of reforms something different, oh, oh, different honestly, there. honestly saying they're not they're not presenting their reforms i i look through the legislature through the laws that they registered so they're trying to you know to show that they are social they take care about the social issue of the people from the donbass and they're trying to say that we will support the, and you know, the pensioners. They're, they're voters, actually. Uh, Those people are voted for them in, uh, yeah, but in great numbers, especially in the east or southern know, I'm, provinces. I'm from Donbass itself. So for me, uh, when when we had lots of these protest protest in March, in April, in May, when like me and my guys like try to, you know, try to do the pro-Ukrainian rallies. Uh, honestly, saying I don't see the, I, I haven't seen any constructive uh, position of the party of region itself, and now they, you know, they trying to show that the, we are the only one who care about the people of Donbas. But, you know, seems seems for me that it just, mm, it's it's not it's not their interest. Well, as someone, I mean, originally from Donbas, what made you choose to go to Batkovshina as a party? To I would argue that Batkovshina was the time the only like. Me and the number five on the, I'm the number nine on the Batkishina, but number five is Alena Shkrum. We were chosen by the open uh, competition as the part of the professional government initiative, the people who, Western educated people who returned to Ukraine. And we won this competition, and uh, Batkishina was the only first who provided this open competition, and the only party who, who said that the Minsk agreement wasn't the right case for Donbass, so the Batkishina ideology was the, you know, fully corresponded with mine. And so, I mean, what do you think is the right case for Donbass at this point? If it's not the Minsk agreement, I mean, is there a position you want to see advanced? Sure, like, I, I see that the, the level of Minsk agreement is not the one that could, you know, f end up this conflict. I think mm -hmm. that it should be increased at least to Geneva format or even J7 format because the agreement that's signed by the, with, with all my respect, with the with the ambassador of Russia on behalf of the whole Russia is not the paper that signed by Cameron, Obama, Merkel, Poroshenko, and Mr. Putin. So I think this this kind of agreement could work. But that we, we see that every every day, Ukrainian soldiers are dying, you know, Ukrainian citizens are dying mm -hmm. in the in the conflict. So it it just you know frees the conflict or maybe decreases the tensions. But conflict is still ongoing. I mean, with such big issues, what, what can a small party hope to achieve in, in the Rada? I mean, something like Batkovshina, to what extent can they work on their own? To what extent can uh, they have influence? Basically, if you look at the coalition agreement, like all our, uh, all our <coughs> I would say, demands were heard by the coalition, and uh, we, we could, uh, we could 
see that the rejection of the non-bloc status, joining NATO, uh, the continue, uh, the, um, let's see, the moratorium on the selling the, the land, uh, the case with Nadia Savchenko, social mm -hmm. protection. So we, we have all our critical demands heard by the coalition. So the people who voted for us, for our program, we will, we will continue to, to uh, realize it. Yeah. And what are your top priorities? I mean, what do you think the, the Rava can achieve before New Year's? Is there uh, something uh, that can be Like we, we already registered the law on the, on the immunity, MP's immunity, which is one of the crucial cases where lots of businessmen went to parliament mm -hmm. not to work on the development of Ukraine, but to, re to, to have some kind well, of immunity on the criminal prosecution. So we already registered And that's it. something not everyone knows, that MPs in, in Ukraine traditionally have immunity from, uh, from prosecution, not yes, prosecution. Yes. <laughs> no, we, we, we're not registered, we try, we, we, because yeah. it's a, it's, we should change the constitution. We, we started the procedure to, to sign the, to have the, to collect the signature for these amendments to the constitution, and we are trying to Push them through. But do you think that's possible before New Year's? Can that uh, be done? I quickly? think we should, we should, we should possibly, I don't think that we will, uh, you know, we will, we will adopt this law, but we will start this process already before the New Year. Hmm. We will be able to do this. And to start to work towards that. Actually, yeah. I want to um, address our viewers right now. And again, if you want, if you have any questions to our guests or any comments, you can go on Twitter, tweet with Hromatsky hashtag, and we will definitely profile you to, uh, tweets. And actually, w what I want to profile right now is um, that your comment about Yulia Tymoshenko being a peacemaker, in possible peacemaker in a new parliament, some people, um, like for example, our regular viewer Nikolai Holmov, he's a famous blogger from Odessa, he called it comedy night on Romanske, um, but uh, because of, I think because of a really harsh legacy of previous parliament and their inability to find compromises. And I think if we have time for just last question on that uh, particular topic, and I, I won't go back to the uh, opposition, I want to go back to those over 100 in peace in Ukrainian parliament uh, over last years or, or even over last decade this uh, um, this um, really toxic atmosphere of corruption was present in the Ukrainian parliament um, is there any kind of fear that having so, ma so much unallied MPs in the parliament will create this pool for possible corruption uh, because you can buy those votes really easily because they are not inside fractions? That's what actually happened many times before, even with people in fractions, but now you have no absolutely legal obligation. You can vote whatever you want if you're an independent uh, MPs and you have 100 votes that you can actually buy. And let's be frank about it, buying, uh, buying votes in Ukrainian parliament is very popular uh, tradition for, you know, for over a decade or even more. You know, like one of the reasons why the, the previous par parliament bought the votes is that they don't, didn't have enough, to, they didn't have 226 votes mm -hmm. to, to pass the law. That's why there was some, you know, parliamentary group that tried to, you know, par parasitize on, on the, but now we have lots of votes, like nobody needs to do this. And I would, uh, it, it, it would be interesting to see that there are, there are some people who voted for so-called, you know, dictatorship laws, so if they will vote for some to support some laws and, and other parties reject, I think it will be a big, huge scandal. So I don't think that it will be the case right now in this parliament. But looking forward, you know, forward towards this week, we expect to have a government announced. Um, may not yeah. happen, but to have some more other ministers named. Now, in his speech, um, Poroshenko on Thursday talked about the wanting to change the laws so that foreigners could have ministerial positions and could be involved. And we also have an article from the Kiev Post, which maybe our producers can put up, uh, just talking about how Western firms, so Peterson and Partners also working with Corn Ferry, had uh, you know, identified 24 names based on interviews, people who would be good for Ukraine's cabinet. Uh, this was done by the Sources Renaissance Foundation. They say this costs you know, $82,000 to do all of this. I and mean, what do you see the role of foreigners there? Does Ukraine need foreigners? Is this helpful? Is this distracting? Um, what, what kind of cabinet does Ukraine need, especially for the economy, and to put kind of confidence there? Okay, so basically, when the president announced this, uh, you know, there was some, you know, some, some. Everybody started sh not shouting. Everybody started, you know, what, what he said, like foreigners, like it was some something interesting that nobody heard about this. 
So you know, my criteria for the, for like, I'm easy with this. It's like, uh, I'm easy for some, you know, as I call, you know, sexy reforms or something like this, some, something new, you know, something innovative. Maybe this could change this country, so I'm not afraid of foreign, but I would see the, not the, you know, not the person itself. I would, I would like to see his uh, professional, his profile, whether he's patriotic, so he need to change the citizenship to become, mm -hmm. to, to become, to, you know, to accountable somehow to the Ukrainian people. And of course, I want to hear his program. As like I started in the United Kingdom, like technology and adaptation of technology in technological innovation. And I know that not every, you know, not one one size does not fit at all. So I want to hear how he will adapt his knowledge, his experience to the Ukrainian reality. And if this person will be good, like I will vote for him. But the main question is not right now, and I want to like to hear the answer, who will be responsible for these foreigners? What political party, the coalition itself, and it's so your concern actually that use cannons uh, uh, yeah I, I'm easy with this decision but there are some 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 questions yeah uh, there is a very interesting comment this week about the the news of appointing a foreigner uh, from Yevgen Vorobyov his um, famous uh, analyst and actually uh, what he said that he thinks it's just populate basically and outsourcing of uh, responsibility yes I just wanted to profile that well, that's great. I mean, I think you made a great point that it's all in the details, and we'll certainly be looking for all of those. Thank you so much for yeah. joining us.